and welcome to Tank and AFE News. I'm Tom, and this is the Tanks of World War II video series. Now, each episode, we look at a different tank from World War II, starting with the beginning of the war and working our way chronologically to the war's end in 1945. Currently, we are looking at the German invasion of 1940 and the tanks used by the French, British, and Germans during that campaign. So far, we have examined a number of French tanks, starting with the World War I veteran FT, moving on to the Char D, the FCM 36, the Renault 35 and 40, the Hotchkiss 35 and 39, the Somo S35, and the Char B1 Bis. This episode, we are looking at the AMR 33 and AMR 35 light tanks. Now, these are not tanks I generally plan to do, partly because there's just not a lot of images available, so don't expect um, to see the images change as often in the previous two episodes. Um, and this also is going to be a little shorter episode than most, being more around 18 minutes, or most of the other ones are more like half an hour. But to make up for it, we are doing two videos this week with another short one on the Char 2C coming up, hopefully in a couple days after this one goes live. In this series, we've looked at a number of French light tanks already. However, these tended to be quite different from the light tanks of other nations in the pre-war period, being fairly well armored and slow, such as the R35 and the H35. Now, these designs are quite unlike the tankette trend started by the British Cardin Lloyd designs that influenced tank design almost everywhere else. However, the French did not avoid the curse of the Cardin Lloyd style tankette completely, uh, producing in the early 1930s the AMR 33 and AMR 35. General Maxime Wigand became head of the general staff in January of 1930 in France and also vice president of the Superior Council of War. And in his July 1930 reform plan for the Army, it included the motorization of several infantry divisions and a complete overall overhaul of the cavalry. Now, under this plan, the cavalry had three different vehicle requirements based on three different missions. First, there is the, and of course you'll have to pardon my pronunciations, the AMR, the Automitrailleuse de Reconnaissance, the AMD, Automitrailleuse de, de Coventry, and the AMC, Automitrailleuse de Combat. Now, the AMD was intended to be the traditional cavalry role of long-range exploration and road patrol, and this job would eventually fall to the Panhard four-wheel armored cars, which was an excellent armored car, but we're not going to cover it in this series because this series is about tanks, not armored cars. Although, maybe someday. Now, the role of the AMC was to be the primary combat vehicle of the cavalry, and this was fulfilled eventually by the H-39 and S-35, as we covered in previous episodes. Now, the role of the AMR would be fulfilled by the AMR-33, and then later the AMR-35. These are light tanks armed only with a machine gun. Now, despite having the word reconnaissance in their title, these vehicles were not intended to be strictly recon vehicles, but were also expected to perform a number of different cavalry-style missions, similar to light tank designs of other countries in the early 1930s. Now, initially, the AMR role was to be fulfilled by a half-track design by Citroën in 1931. Now, in response to this uh, choice, by the French military, uh, the famous French auto company Renault decided to develop a full-tracked vehicle for the AMR role. This vehicle was not much larger than the old Renault FT light tank of World War I fame, but it was much faster due in part to Renault using a more modern narrow pitch track, similar to that on the Cardin Lloyd tankettes. Although they didn't license the design from the British, they just sort of copied it. Now, this prototype was called the Renault VM, and in 1933, Renault was awarded a contract to build the vehicle as the AMR Renault, Renault Model 1933, or just AMR 33. In 1935, production of the AMR 33 was finished, with 120 vehicles having been built. Now, while the AMR 33 was found to be considerably more mobile than the half-track vehicle it replaced, the vehicle still had a number of shortcomings. In particular, engine noise and vibration caused crews to become exhausted quickly, and the suspension was fragile and prone to failure. In 1934, work on a replacement was initiated, resulting in the vehicle that would be known as the AMC-35. This vehicle featured a new suspension, a larger hull, and the engine mounted in the rear rather than the side-mounted engine in the AMR-33. And also the hull included space for a larger turret if needed at some point. Now, these vehicles were delivered to the French military in 1936 in three different configurations. One configuration had a 7.5 millimeter machine gun, one a 13.3 heavy machine gun, and then also a command vehicle equipped with a radio. In total, 167 AMR-35 vehicles were produced, 87 having the medium machine gun, 81 the heavy machine gun, and 13 command variants. The AMR-33 was a very small vehicle of about 5 tons in weight, 
And in terms of armor and weaponry, it was pretty similar to the tankettes of the period. Armor protection was at maximum 13mm of riveted armor plate. Armament was a single French 7.5mm Rebel machine gun, although another machine gun was carried in reserve and could be mounted on a pedestal on top of the vehicle for anti-aircraft use. The crew consisted of two men, a driver and a commander who was also the gunner. Both were situated on the left side of the vehicle, the driver sitting in front of the commander. The right side of the vehicle was occupied by the 8-cylinder, 84-horsepower Renault Neurosport 24CV engine, which powered the vehicle along at a rather healthy top speed of 34 miles per hour on road. Now, unfortunately for the crew, the position of the engine in the vehicle made it a rather noisy and uncomfortable vehicle to operate, a complaint that contributed to its replacement just a couple years later. Unusually for a French design of the period, the AMR-13 turret had a top hatch that allowed the commander to stick his head out of the top and view his surroundings. As noted earlier, the suspension, suspension and running gear were inspired by the British Cardin Lloyd designs common to the period. However, the AMR-33 suspension proved unsuccessful, being too weak over time to support the vehicle in moving at uh, speed cross-country. That said, the suspension is an interesting design, featuring a single two-wheel bogey in the center mounted on a coil spring, and then a single wheel mounted on a bell crank style arm both in the front of and behind the central bogey for four wheels, uh, road wheels total. Now the Renault ZT was created to fix many of the problems with the AMR-33 and was renamed the AMR-35 upon being accepted for service. A new suspension was introduced, being of a more rugged design and generally resembling the suspension of the R-35 infantry tank. The vehicle was made longer and the engine was moved to the rear, reducing the noise and vibration of the side-mounted design of the AMR-33. A new engine was introduced, the Renault 447-22CV four-cylinder petrol engine, which provided 82 horsepower. Now, this new engine originated as a bus engine, whereas the engine of the AMR-33 derived from a sports car engine, making the AMR-35 engine more robust and durable, as one might expect from a bus engine. The larger hull meant that a larger turret could be used. Roughly half the AMR-35s produced used the same Avis-1 turret of the AMR-33, equipped with the standard 7.5mm machine gun, while the other half of AMR-35 production used the Avis-2 turret, equipped with a 13.2mm heavy machine gun. Now, despite being larger and heavier than the AMR-33, the AMR-35 provided no better armor protection with only 13mm thick armor at max. The AMR-33 did not have any significant variants that made it into production, although its hull was used for prototypes of a variety of vehicles, including an APC, self-propelled gun, military tractor, smoke lane tank, tank destroyer, and even a trench jumper. Now, there were three AMR-33 TSF command vehicles in service, which were AMR-33s fitted with an ER-29 radio set. Another variant worth mentioning is the AMC-34, also known as the Renault YR. Now this is basically an AMR-33 hull with a variety of different turrets from other vehicles uh, placed on top of it to make it a shard to combat. Uh, but only a handful of these were produced and they're pretty much treated like prototypes almost. The AMR-35 saw a significant number of variants and upgrades. Two of the most interesting are the ZT-2 and ZT-3. Now the ZT-2 featured a turret armed with a 25mm anti-tank gun in the turret, while the ZT-3 also featured a 25mm anti-tank gun, but it was hull mounted with no turret. Ten of each of these were ordered, and delivery happened in 1939. Um, these vehicles were then issued to some of the reconnaissance units in the DLMs. There was also command versions of the AMR-35, which was the ADF-1, being equipped with a radio for platoon commanders. The Renault YS did away with the turret altogether and was intended as a higher level command vehicle. Ten of these were built. There was also the Renault YS-2, an artillery observation vehicle that did not progress past a single prototype that was built. Now the final notable variant was the ZT-4. This was intended as a tropical version of the tank to be used in the French colonies, replacing the old FT tanks that had been shipped out there. Now 40 ZT hulls were produced, and none of these made it outside of France before the German invasion of 1940. 
The last French variant we shall mention is the AMC-35. Now this really is not so much a variant but a new tank, but since it's not going to get its own episode, I wanted to work it in somewhere. And as the name suggests, it's essentially a larger, better armed and armored vehicle that resembled the AMR-35, but was intended for the AMC mission, which was uh, to be the primary combat vehicle of the French cavalry. Now, of course, it would be passed over in favor of the Sumois S-35 in that role, but the tank did actually go into production, um, albeit most of them would be sold to Belgium, who designated it the ACG-1. Despite the fact that the word reconnaissance is right in the title of the AMR, these vehicles were not issued to reconnaissance units, but were instead intended to serve in the main body of the armored formations, providing fire support to the motorized infantry, as well as conducting other traditional light tank uh, missions. Now, due to the fairly long service life, at least by 1930 standards, the organization of AMR tanks changed over time. By 1940, the AMR-33 tanks were assigned to the RDP of the DLMs, that is, the Regiment de Dragoons Porte of the Divisions Légère de Mécaniques. Now, as we've stated in previous episodes, the Division Légère de Mécaniques were the most powerful of the armored formations in the French Army in 1940. And the RDP was basically a motorized infantry battalion reinforced with light tanks. Each RDP was equipped, in theory, with 23 AMR-33 tanks, and seen as there were two RDP per each DLM, uh, that meant that each DLM had 46 AMC 33s in total. Now in practice there were not enough AMR 33 tanks for this plan, so the AMR 35 had to be used in some of the RDPs. Most of the rest of the AMR 35 tanks were used to equip three squadrons in the first and second DLM, consisting of 66 tanks each and one squadron of the first DLC, which the DLC being the Division Légère de Cavalry, which was a mixed horse and mechanized unit. An AMR-33 of the 3rd DLM was the very first French tank destroyed by the German invaders in 1940, and things never got much better for this poorly armed and armored light tank after that. The AMR-33 did especially poorly, with 75% being lost in the first week of fighting, although more fell victim to mechanical failure than enemy action. The AMR-35 did not fare much better, many also being lost to mechanical failure as well, and few surviving the campaign at all. Now, a handful of surviving vehicles were taken into German service following the 1940 campaign and were used for internal security or training duty, uh, and they were designated the Panzer Spawagen VM701F. A handful were also converted into a mortar carrier, a which was designated 8 cm Schwer Granatwerfer 34 off Panzer Waspagen AMR 35F. Whew! Initially, I had not planned to do an episode on these two tank models, figuring them to be of little overall consequence in the 1940 campaign. However, at over 100 of each model produced, I figured it was worth the effort to cover these little vehicles. That said, they really did have little impact on the campaign overall, and due to their unreliability, poor armor, and poor firepower were probably more of a hindrance to the French than an asset. Now, machine gun armed light tanks and takeettes generally performed poorly for everyone in the early part of World War II, with the possible exception of the Panzer I. And that has more to do with the fact that the Panzer I, for all of its limitations, was part of a very efficient and effective combined arms team, the German Panzer Division. Not because the Panzer I was a particularly impressive tank, it wasn't. Now, had the AMR tanks at least been reliable and been used in reconnaissance units, my judgment of them might be somewhat less harsh, but these vehicles were being used as fire support for mechanized infantry in the RDPs or as light tank squadrons for the DLMs. And a single machine gun is simply not enough firepower for such a task, even by the standards of 1940, early war standards. Although considerably faster than the old Renault FT tanks, it's hard to say how these AMR tanks were better or more effective than the old World War I veteran in any other regard other than speed. Certainly, the AMR tanks were less effective than their light tank brethren in the infantry branch, the Renault 35 and the Hotchkiss 35, which, while quite slow and antiquated in some respects, at least had a cannon and a machine gun, and a reasonable amount of armor. 
If you are interested in seeing an AMR-33, you really have only one option, because only one survives, and that is at the French Tank Museum in Samour, France. Now, if you want to see an AMR-35, that's a little harder. You'll have to go to Tank Heaven to see that thing, because none seem to have survived here on Earth. However, the Samour Museum does have an AMC-35, or Renault ACG-1, on display. As for the sources used in this video, at least in terms of books, a uh, shorter list than usual this week, just um, AFE Weapons Profile number 36 by James Bingham, French Tanks of World War II Volume 2 by Stephen Zloga, that of course part of the Osprey New Vanguard series, and then finally um, French Tanks and Armored Vehicles 1914 and 1940 by Francois Vauvillier, which that book's we've used for every single one of these episodes. <laughs> And that wraps up AMC 33 and 35. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, subscribe and like. Tell all your friends. Um, if you really like it and want to see more of these, uh, check out our Patreon page and just, you know, the, donate a dollar a month. Every little bit of money helps. Helps build up the book collection that I use for researching these videos. Helps with equipment and, you know, who knows, maybe for one day I get enough, we will go on some trips and shoot video at some of the museums and tanks that are out there in the United States or even abroad. So anyhow, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned because probably in a couple days after this post we'll hopefully have um, a fairly short episode on the French Char 2C and then once that is out we will be done with French tanks and we can move on to the German tanks of the 1940 campaign. All right, well, thank you, and stay safe, and we'll catch you on the next one.